Okay, Amanda, now we're, it's getting dark <laughs> and we're doing the C108 walkthrough. We're going to do this fairly quick and uh, just kind of show how the systems in a C108 work. Um, this particular boat is in our service building and um, it's a 108 that's going up to a customer in Campbell River, Canada. This is his third Aspen and uh, um, he loves Aspen, loves how we've taken care of him. So um, brand new boat, hasn't been delivered yet. Uh, fun things to see, it's on the triple axle trailer that we do for the uh, uh, 108. Um, most of the boats are on double axles, but this one kind of gets up to, doesn't have to have a, a triple axle, but it does make it a little nicer to tow. Um, this is a float on trailer made in, uh, I think it's Vero Beach, Florida. Seems weird to get a trailer from Florida, but uh, Tim Poppel and his team uh, and his sister Tamara make some of the best trailers in the world. And uh, they kind of think like we do as, as far as doing things. And, uh, and if there's anything wrong, they always take care of us really well too. Pretty rare. Um, it has electric over hydraulic brakes, um, which are really nice. And so really smooth control of the braking. If you look in the center, it has guide bunks. And um, where the boats um, slide on and off, it's kind of a V-shape with a plastic guide. Um, makes it come on really, really, really great. Um, and it tows beautifully with the air can flow right down through the tunnel section. You can also see behind you when you're towing, which is really nice. Um, this customer's got a larger yacht and he's gonna tow it with these towing pintles. Um, you need to tow from down low. Uh, if you try to tow from up high, it wants to make the nose come down, which will make it bow steer. Uh, it doesn't tow as smooth as it does with these. These are just spray knockers that are on the boat because it's a high speed displacement hull, it never comes on plane. Um, there's a thin layer of uh, green water that wants to stick to the hull side. And if you don't have the spray knockers on, it'll climb up high enough that when it flips over and it's windy, it can actually get missed on the windshield, and I don't like that. So we do these spray knockers. They're stainless steel, 316 stainless steel polished. Uh, another thing to notice is the bottom paint here, and this is a Seahawk BioCop bottom paint. So it's a real high dose of biocide that keeps the slime from growing. And then it also has a, a big dose of copper in it, so you don't have any of the barnacles growing either. When we put it on, we've sanded it with 80 grit, and then um, it's been uh, cleaned, uh, and then there's a primer that goes on, very light primer, and then um, we roll it on, and then we tip it right away while it's wet, so you get a real smooth finish. Um, because it's a high-speed displacement hull, you don't want a lumpy paint job, or it works like sandpaper in the water and wants to slow you down. This is that armor coat gel coat here. The stripe is gel coated in too. This is the best gel coat known to man. Uh, it's about $8 a pound. Most guys will spend about $2 a pound for gel coat. Um, and uh, as long as you don't wash it with acetone or muriatic acid, it'll last a really long time. You've got to wax it once or twice a year, depending on your environment. Um, things are on the outside of the boat here. Um, this is a vent for um, a uh, probably a water tank. This is a, a vent for the hot water heater, um, just different through holes. This is the vent for the furnace in the boat here. Um, big Lumar port lights, made in the United States. Um, stainless steel lettering throughout. Uh, motor pod here. Uh, the motor pod has its own separate bilge pump in it. And to control that, um, there's a switch that we'll show you inside in the cockpit um, so you can turn it on and test it. And there are also automatic bilge pumps in this too. This is our 115 horsepower motor. Um, and the transom of the boat, when we do our bottom paint, this is not copper paint here, um, and neither is this. Um, you want to use just a biocide paint near your aluminum, um, you know, outboard engine. If you were to set it onto copper paint with aluminum, you can get corrosion and things. You don't want that. Um, this is an underwater light that we've got here, and uh, Mike's a big fisherman, so he had us do this uh, sea deck material which is a kind of a foam material that's computer cut. It looks great. It's nice to kneel on and it's easy to clean. Um, this bustle here on Mike's boat is set up as, uh, it's usually used as a generator box, but Mike's a huge fisherman. And so he had us build a custom fish well that's giant. We'll show you a picture of that pretty quickly. Stainless steel props. Um, these are almost the same pitch between the two sides. Um, one inch difference, I think. Um, the engines are different horsepower, but they have the same RPM range. They also have the same gear ratio. 
and the port hull being 35% thinner takes dramatically less horsepower to push it, so it actually balances out just right. Runs and tracks beautifully, straight arrow, um, really good. We use the dole fins, um, and we use a real dole fin. If you look at the side view of it, it's flat on the bottom, has a shape on the top, so it's actually a foil shape. And so, um, versus some of the ones that are just blades, this actually flies through the water and gives a, a good lift. It also stops air from being sucked into the prop so you don't ventilate. Um, and it gives you a lot more trim up, trim down capability. So it's just more powerful kind of a fin. And then they're made out of material. If you hit something, they can bend and, and not damage uh, the lower unit at all. Um, so that's just kind of a flavor for that. Um, clamshell on the side up here is just for the uh, ventilation for uh, the bathroom that's right inside there in the shower. Um, got the bow thruster here. There is an optional stern thruster that fits in this area right here, but uh, kind of a cool design. It hangs out the back. Um, it's a side power th uh, stern thruster that's made for outboard boats. And for some folks that are new to boating, they really enjoy that. The bow thruster is standard. Let's take a look at that. Um, kind of fun things with the bow thruster. Um, it's a four inch tube. It's about a two and a half horsepower motor. Uh, but the tube is set into the hull a little bit of an angle, so the thrust shoots underneath the other hull, and then there's a brow on the inside. And then uh, on the other side, there's also a little zinc that you'll change when, uh, you know, it's time to do bottom paint and everything like that. But it's set in at just a slight angle, um, and, and really very handy when you're docking. All right, let's go up and inside, kind of walk through that. Just kind of give you an overview of this. This is part of... Uh, uh, mass support. Better to get it out of the way for this discussion here. So when the mast up above is folded, uh, there's a pin at the front and it just swings back and that pin goes into this and this goes into here and it basically supports it in the front corner of the, the deck there. This is what we call an easy davit and it's a motorized davit system and it'll allow Mike to swing down into the water about a 45 degree angle. Then he can pull the bow of his dinghy up, pull it up, and it clips on with this here. And then he pulls it on and then pushes the button and it lifts the dinghy right up and on. When the dinghy's off and this folds down, uh, this has got a quick pin on it right there. And look, at there's a big fold down ladder yeah. there. And that's a real handy thing. And then there's a couple, of, if it's super rough, you can put a... Uh, ratchet strap across the back of the dinghy. This captures the front of the dinghy, works pretty well. So, Very this nice. is this huge fish well that we did for Mike. And how to store a lot of fish. Yeah, he's a big fisherman. And these are kind of part of a neat system. And there, there's a standpipe here, over here. And so, basically, he's got a timer back behind the door that he can turn on. Air and no, it fills it with water up to this height, mm -hmm. and then um, every six minutes it basically adds more water and the extra it brings in cold water and then it flows out the back right here. And so he basically has an automatic cooler mm -hmm. fish holder here. Mm -hmm. And then when this comes down, you can see it's gasketed all mm -hmm. the way around, um, and there's a nice seat cushion here too. Gas springs, no sharp edges anywhere. Really a nice fish well. Yeah. I'd say so. so. Let's uh, go in here. There are some battery switches in here and uh, nicely done. But one of these is going to be house battery two. That's the one right down below us. And we don't really need the starter or anything like this. These are the switches to turn on the, the pumps in the motor in the motor pods. So that's mm -hmm. the port one, starboard one. Mm -hmm. You can hear them come on. I just don't like compartments that you don't have a pump in and, mm -hmm. and that could have water in them. I and mean, they shouldn't. They're sealed. But you just never know. I just like having pumps. Mm -hmm. All right. And so now we're going to go forward and down into the starboard stateroom that's underneath the dinette. And because the house battery bank is underneath this bed right in here, the most logical thing was to put the switches for that right in here and um, I don't need the inverter but here's the house and we don't need the bow thrusters so now the house batteries are on we're gonna go back up here okay and so that just turned on and then all we have to do here 
is turn on light sub panel uh, electronics and another sub panel let there be light let there be light yeah the light controls for the back deck are right here and uh, we don't need the refrigerator uh, courtesy lights spreader lights and then we don't need the underwater lights but look at these lights here wow those are great so and then these come on too mm -hmm. I was wondering. Uh, but mike's going to do some fishing he'll get up early in the morning and, and go catch fish these will make it really nice for him mm -hmm. okay um, over here this is the control for his uh, bait pump and we've only done this one other time but it was for mike's last boat and he likes it it's worked great he fishes at the northwest corner northwest corner of vancouver island one of the roughest sections of the British Columbia coast, and that's his normal boating place for catching fish. Mm -hmm. He goes out and just slaughters them. He's a great <laughs> fisherman. Awesome. Um, and, you know, I sink here. This is a little wash down. Uh, and to use this, I'm going to turn that off. Um, this has the option of going up like mm -hmm. that, and then you can turn it on and off here. Oh. Or you can do that and just do that. And if you're fishing, it's pretty nice because you can um over the side it went yeah. <laughs> um if you're fishing you can rinse off your lures and kind of get them every everything there you got something to hold on to here this is another refrigerator here with a little freezer on the top and uh good for drinks and stuff like that mm -hmm. and if you want if you're on a cruising kind of a deal and mike will fish a lot but he also goes cruising with his wife and he needed the flexibility this can turn in turn it up colder and it'll it'll be a freezer as well um, this is that uh, sea deck material, pretty neat, good stereo. These are fun. This is a Bernouin um, a rod mount, and it, it's it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of uh, rod holders. You can put in a rod holder, you can put in downriggers, you can put in a crab pot puller, you can put mm -hmm. in a knife holder, you can put in a cleat. It has all these features, and uh, we do a number of them on this boat for uh, the real serious fishermen. And he's got a cushy place here. Even even this stuff, if you're just going to sit here it's on the nice. side, of, it's, it's significantly more comfortable. And I, I think I think he's going to like this stuff really well. Um, this is a storage area here. I typically put um, a little bit of that rubber mesh that you use in a kitchen ca kitchen sink mm -hmm. or kitchen counter or cupboards, and uh, put my cleaning gear in there. Uh, this is a mount here for a great big downrigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's power here so that he can plug in his power downrigger mm -hmm. right there. Um, in this area here is uh, the propane locker mm -hmm. and that's airtight and it has a vent over the side. And then right below is the windless control for the easy davit mm -hmm. or the control and the davit motor itself. And uh, very similar to what we do on our 40 foot boats. Mm -hmm. um, very nicely done. Um, let's see, other things here, this is kind of fun to see, to see how this is all done for the easy davit. There's a roller in here that goes down to the winch. This is that, uh, Dynamic. Kevlar type, mm -hmm. you know, super high strength rope. That rope at a quarter inch will hold 4,000 pounds. Wow. Um, really neat stuff. Here we've got great big hinges, uh, you know, nice gasketed hatch, and this comes down into... Uh, the uh, storage area, look at that, really Huge. big. Yeah. And your um, water pump is there, and your macerator pump is too. Look at how easy those are to get to if you ever had to work yeah, on them. Yeah, really nice. And then your second water pump is right here, and they're labeled with what they do. Um, this is a tank for the diesel, uh, for his uh, diesel heater. Mm -hmm. And then this is the waste tank here. And this is uh, the waste coming in, and then this is the waste out through the macerator, and this is the waste going through or through the macerator pump there, and this one is for the overboard. Wait, this is the overboard suck out. That's the macerator. This is coming in from the uh, head. the head itself, and then this is vent hose here. Mm -hmm. Okay, all nicely done, strapped in place, cleated in place. The tank is strapped down and bolted in place, um, and then uh, yeah. Those pies at the very back of that compartment there mm -hmm. are um, access so that you can get to the bilge pump that's in the um, motor pod so that uh -huh. you could actually service it. Gotcha. And we actually tested those pies 
um, in the bottom of a garbage can and filled the garbage can, you know, with 42 inches of water just to see if it would take it. The water level in that area is only about 20 inches. So that pie held twice what the actual working water load could be if you ever had a leak in there. Mm -hmm. Kind of like to do things like that just to make sure it's it's really right. These are gas springs here that are stainless steel. Mm -hmm. um, not a painted powder coated automotive part. Mm -hmm. um, for the refrigerator here, if you're going to turn control the temperature, it's better if you open the latch. There's a control knob right here, and and there's a little arrow there. Four is about your normal setting, and uh, that would be like a refrigerator home. If you want to use it as a freezer, you just go up to about six or seven. Um, the thing to remember is if you're using it as a freezer, it's going to draw about twice as much power. And, you know, that might be okay, maybe not, depending on what's going on. Uh, the door here is a little wider. I think it's three inches wider than on a C100. And this hatch is also uh, about five inches wider than on a C100 diesel inboard boat. Um, boat comes with the shore power cord, another one of the smart cords. Um, we looked in here briefly. Uh, this is an optional um, exterior uh, shower and it has yeah. hot and cold and it rotates this part rotates in relation to that I don't want to turn around I might get wet mm -hmm. but basically kind of a neat thing Very cool. and it goes down and if you see it correctly for it's spraying waterproof. off all the blood and the fish exactly yeah here is the um, exterior battery switches here and so the upper one here is a um, house battery which we turned on Start batteries, this would be to power up your Yamahas. The emergency parallel here, only used for a brief few minutes um, because it, it basically is gonna pair up a flat battery with a full battery. You wanna do that to get it started and get it charging. And then after four or five minutes, you wanna turn it off because it's kinda hard on your batteries. These are um, pushed, you know, you just flip them on or off. This is a, see where it says off? That's mm -hmm. the off position. That's on for the Davit. They're on right now. This is the power here for the uh, fuse panel there. Mm -hmm. And interesting, that shouldn't be a 200 amp uh, breaker there. I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> okay, um, should be about a 30 amp. And here is just storage area, typically, you know, motor oil and uh, down, downrigger balls and stuff like that in this mm -hmm. area here. This is where your water fill is mm -hmm. and uh, it's similar on the opposite side over there for water. Um, another one of the Bernoulli mounts here. Boy, kneeling on this deck is really, really nice. Really nice, yeah. Um, here, let's open this up real quick. Kind of show you what's in here. Huge storage area. Whoa, yeah. Okay, and you have a nice little step here. Um, these are all PEX, uh, um, you know, plumbing lines. And then right there is another pump that is the starboard freshwater pump right there. And you can see the start battery back in the corner. It's mm -hmm. labeled. And then the house battery is right there. We put an extra house battery back here just so that if we do get the stern thruster, we have power right there for it. Mm -hmm. And then um, right underneath, right behind you here are the primer balls. Um, for the Yamaha. So mm -hmm. if you do run out of fuel, you'll have to, you know, put your fuel in and squeeze the ball a little bit to mm -hmm. prime it up. There's a bilge pump for this side right here. Um, real nice. Let's uh, close this. We'll open this hatch. And this one is access to um, the uh, fuel tank on this side. Mm -hmm. And this is about, uh, if I remember right, 130 gallons or 110 gallons. And um, it's a powder coated tank made by Florida Tank. Um, 50, 52 marine grade aluminum with a baffle in it. It has a Wema sender. You can see how the wiring is all done beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, double hose clamps on both ends of all of our connections. Um, and then this is plumbing here for his bait tank. And there's a magnetic drive bait tank pump. Yep, you're showing it there. Uh, and then this is the strainer here for his bait tank pump. Mm -hmm. And then right here 
are the fuel filters for the oh, three fuel nice. tanks. Very all nice. labeled beautifully. Um, and then again, everything double hose clamped. Everything is color coded on the hoses on both ends too. Mm -hmm. So if you ever have to service anything, you can get to it. Um, nice big stainless hardware. Even O-rings inside the hatches and the latches here. Mm -hmm. um, and then that latches there. Nice, nice hatch there to get into the quarter berth. This is just a pie so that if you have to get to the wiring in that part of the boat, you can get to it nicely. Um, there's normally, uh, most people order a table for here, but Mike's got a, uh, a whole fishing thing that goes on. He needed the bigger deck for it. Um, let's go forward here and kind of walk through this part of the boat. This is the port quarter berth. And uh, I'm gonna step down here and kind of show you how that works. The normal position for this cushion is folded over like that. And you see how it gives you a footrest. And now you can step down uh -huh. there. There's another footrest here. You kind of go in backwards, okay? And then um, there's a nice little shelf here, you know, for books and stuff like that. And this guest has got his own big port light. And then he also has his own reading light. And uh, there's a nice little shelf here. Uh, it's a pretty good space and again, it's the tri-density foam mattress and this is four inches wider than what we did on the C100 So everything's a little bigger on a C108 This area right here, which if we were outside in the Sun, this is a master uh, Master volt um, solar charge controller and it's a 30 amp capacity and it basically brings in the 240 watts of solar power panel power and brings it in and feeds it into the house battery banks. And it's a beautiful piece, really robust. Everything we buy from Mastervolt, I don't think we've ever had a warranty claim on anything. They build the best stuff, uh, made in the US here. Nice little fire extinguisher, uh, good teak floor, and the floor is removable. There's a bilge pump underneath it. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't, we do things, but you gotta be able to service everything. I hate things you can't service. Yeah. Um, even details like the sharp edges that you typically would have, the guys of D-Bird, some of the safety precautions there in the overhead hatch. This is really a nice space. And, and it's neat to have a foot well here where you can, you know, have the bed and, and kind of, you know, get up and down pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. On this side here, um, a drawer for your pots and pans. The boats all ship with um, the original gel coat colors mm -hmm. with it. And if you keep these in a cool spot or refrigerator, the gel coat will last about two years um, before it'll kind of stiffen up. All of this is Burmese teak. Um, all of the slides here are stainless steel as well. Um, and look at how the grains all match. Yeah, it's you know, beautiful. really nicely done. Um, here we've got a swing table, and Mike wanted it set up with cleats here so we can lower this. And these cushions on the front and back drop onto that, and we have one little cushion that he ordered, and it lets this turn into a bigger bed. Mm -hmm. And all the rest of the cushions are removable. This is a big storage area in here with a nice gasket all the way around it. Big storage area. Um, and then the finish here is on the floor is Amtico. It's a synthetic material that even the knots and color go clear through. So it wears like iron. It's used in boats and commercial kitchens. Um, and let's move forward here. The propane section is just like the 40. We'll probably clip that discussion from the 40 in because it's the same thing. It's mm -hmm. just a little smaller. Um, this seat here flips up so that when you're cooking, you can actually have this space and all of that. This was an area for binoculars and things like that. Mm -hmm. All these pink or green stickers all over the boat. We did what we call a green dot bomb audit <laughs> recently. And... So this is a way for us to confirm that every one of these parts has been counted in the bill of materials. Having a really accurate bomb is important mm -hmm. for knowing what a boat costs. We like to know those things. Um, big sink here. Uh, this comes out and is moved around. Mm -hmm. And then they pick the backsplash. And you can get a core end countertop. Some do. Most do. But Mike's like, you know, it's pretty much my fishing boat. Although I have to admit, the gel coat looks great. Mm -hmm. um, it really here is, does. Here's a big storage area in here. It goes way back in there, and uh, yeah, and then normally right here is a microwave, and uh, Mike said I'd rather have it as a storage area, so okay. we turned it into a storage area for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, even a little drawer down here, kind of nice. 
And so, and then under here, look at this, wow. the jumbo drawer. That's for the pots and pans. <laughs> and a lot of companies won't put drawers in because it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, every square inch is valuable in a boat. Mm -hmm. This is. is the propane sniffer on this one. Mm -hmm. And to get it to power up, it's off right now, no lights. We have to push the power on here. And then this is going to flash for about 30 seconds while it sniffs in all the different locations. And then it'll come on solid. And this is and the vent for the heater. That's the vent for the heater there. Another refrigerator here. A little bit bigger freezer. Really nice. Get to pick the colors for your upholstery and things like that. Um, here at the helm, uh, you know, you've got a screen and a vent on a lot of the guys. I mean, this opens, but some of the guys will actually take the screen out on this side because they want to be able to stick their head out and they don't want to move it around. It's really up to you. This was set up for binoculars here. Um, switch panels here. Um, you know, throttles and things right there on the left. It's a little different. You get used to it. So these here are interesting. These are um, basically battery fuel gauges. So right now, these are made by Balmar. And so one is the start battery. The other is the house. And they're basically at 100%. One's at 99 and one, the other's at 100%. So... Um, and as the batteries run down, if you're at 50%, you're at half capacity. Remember how we were saying you have to keep track of it with voltage? Mm -hmm. It's really hard for a lot of people to do that. And we find that this is an option and it costs about five or seven hundred dollars for um, these two gauges. But for people that are running CPAP machines at night and things like that, where they really need to know if their battery is full, this is a really cool way for it to be really obvious. Is my battery full or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. And with an outboard powered boat, you don't have as robust of a charging system as uh, you have. The, the little motor has a 60 amp or a four, I think it's a 20 amp charge on the, on the 115 and it's 60 or 80 amps on the 200. And so, you know, it's nice to have this option to know how, how fast am I charging. Mm -hmm. um, over here, we've got all of our controls for the bilge pumps. And again, it starts with starboard forward, starboard mid, starboard aft, and then it switches to port and so forth. This side here is our nav. And so in the middle, it's off. If it's left, it's the anchor. And then middle, and then go right, and it's anchor and the uh, forward ones. The next one is uh, the dimmer for the, you know, these gauges up on top. Um, and then we have the macerator pump. And uh, when it's in the, yep. So this one just has the one macerator pump. So it's just left, or you know, and it's a spring-loaded switch. You have to hold it on. Um, the next one is defroster. And this is a boost fan. And what it does is it takes the heat, all the heat from the furnace, and sucks it and blows it right onto the dash. So you really have a big defroster event there. Refrigerator power here. So turning on the power in the refrigerator isn't going to be the only thing you have to do. You have to turn on this, this switch mm -hmm. here for the okay. refrigerator as well. Um, then you have a spare, and then this is the fresh water pump here, the bottom one. Mm -hmm. When it's left, it's working off the left pump. When it's right, it's working off the right pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in here is the Yamaha gauge, and pretty obvious what happens there. Garmin instruments here and here, pretty straightforward. This is the autopilot okay. controller here. Mm -hmm. um, you notice that it was on because it auto-fired. I wonder if these auto-fired too. Yeah. Um, so... Um, you can turn that off if you don't want it. Um, most people are okay with having auto fire. Um, so I'm betting this one is on too. <laughs> and that we want off because it's hard on the depth sounder to be, um, uh, you don't want the depth sounder on when you're um, on the yeah, dock. It, yeah. it'll, over a period of time, it'll warm up and it's bad for it. Um, so smaller one here. Okay. Um, so that's kind of fun. Here you've got uh, three fuel tanks in this boat, and they're actually labeled here on the dash and then actually on the side of the boat where you put the fuel in too. So the starboard tank is the starboard fuel tank, auxiliary is the middle one, and the port one is the far one. And you can control, um, basically, the large engine um, can draw fuel out of the starboard tank or the auxiliary tank mm -hmm. and the port engine can only pull out of the uh, small tank and there's controls right here 
to allow you to do that right here pretty obvious and it's labeled right underneath it so I'm gonna turn this off too okay and so those are off so now I'm gonna turn the electronics off so I don't have to worry about them coming back on so this is our DC panel here and this is two is typically um, house and one is the start okay so and so that makes sense it's the higher voltage okay so we're at 12.55 with the house and we're at 12.87 for the engine the engines haven't been running they're not running anything right now so that makes sense this is just a spare you can leave it on or off doesn't matter um, and then these are the, all the lights come through this breaker so if you leave the boat and you don't want your refrigerator run you just bang all these off and you're good to go mm -hmm. okay this is your AC side here and you basically have to turn on the upper breaker and then turn on the things you want and I would typically leave the outlets on and the um, and the hot water heater I wonder where the hot water heater oh this one has a gas hot water heater because it's an outboard boat there's no coil mm -hmm. to heat up a water tank. Right. So um, pretty straightforward there. Here's our ICOM radio. There's a nice stereo here. Okay. And then it also opens up. And then there's a card that you can put your stereo, whatever device you want in there. You can also Bluetooth it to your phone. And all those kind of fancy things. Nice glove box here. Um, these rotate. Um, and the other thing with these outlets for the heater that people don't realize is the cover of this grill comes off and the guys have already taken out. On this one, there's a little flipper valve. Down in the stateroom, there's a flipper valve. People will call and they're saying, yeah, I'm not getting much heat in my stateroom. And it's because the flipper valve in here got shut off. To, mm -hmm. to open it, you have to pop the cover off, push it open, and then put the cover back on. Like that. Okay. Yeah. And here you can see that this is finished checking itself out. And if we want it to come on, we just turn it on. You hear the click, mm -hmm. the solenoid came on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to turn it off. Now we're going to turn that off. And now that system is shut down. Okay, let's go down below. We'll do the battery switches. Okay. Oh, this is our Magnum inverter charger. And uh, so this is the control for that. And this is, um, just like we had on the 40, it's a 2,000 watt inverter and a 100 amp battery charger and it's off right now um, which is fine we don't need it we're not plugged into anything this is your water gauge here for the port side this is the waste tank and this is the starboard water tank so we're pretty low on water right now which with a new boat makes sense they are neat neat lights but people miss the fact that there's a button here well this one has a switch toggle. some of them have a button but this has got a little toggle switch and then this is a nice touch here. Mike got a barometer and a clock, um, and we had to add some stiffening in that area for it, but I think it's a real nice touch, and I really like his upholstery choices. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, all Duratec finish here on the table. Um, all right, let's go forward, and, and then I'll go... Uh, Which way? I'll show you what's going on down below here. So... Uh, I, again, real nice choices with the counters and the sinks and everything. Uh, here you've got a little storage up above. Uh, and then there's a skylight here, just like the other boats have got. Here you've got storage underneath the sink, both sides. And a little drawer for your toothpaste, toothpaste mm -hmm. things like that. Here's a switch for a fan. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then this is the control for the toilet. And then the other thing is you have a track in the ceiling here, uh -huh. and you know that, there's a shower curtain right behind here. So, mm -hmm. and then this comes up here mm -hmm. and Oops. can clip into the teak piece right there. Ah, okay, very nice. All right, and then um, other things that are kind of fun here. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna squish this back a bit. These are optional equipment that he's got. And I want to open this up and show you what's in here. That's a bit tight with all this stuff here. Okay. There we go. So this opens up here. And this is sort of a machinery space. And let me throw the camera in there. So on the right is the Magnum inverter. That's a 2,000 watt inverter, 100 amp charger. These are the um, two golf cart batteries here. 
and they are 200 amp hours each but they're six volts so there's really 100 amp hours so in total with the two of them you have 200 amp hours right there in the back corner there that green thing is the master volt battery charger for the start batteries um, and then you can kind of see some of the wiring in here beautifully done and really nice there's another bilge pump down here everything's easy to access all the terminals are capped just about as tight as it can possibly be is kind of what we're after and notice how everything is finished here on both sides there's no raw wood anywhere on an aspen so you don't have to worry about mold and things like that and then right here is a battery switch set too and this is for the lower one turns on the inverter the next one up is your house battery switch and then the next one is the bow thruster and then you've got hot float and dash power there and so uh, hot float is the uh, third wire for all the bilges again yeah and it's kind of messy in here right now but it's a big space this bed is a full twin mm -hmm. and about six foot four long has a nice hatch in the back and a big window on the side and there's curtains for all of this all right let's see so really nothing to do to the inverter in here this is basically a space that you'll get into if you you know need to replace the batteries or something but it's good to know that it's there how do i get into it and all of that uh, one thing I noticed is the breather pad is missing in here. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to get that. And the fan was a little noisy, so I'll have the boys fix that too. All right, so just a few things that I noticed. That's good. Um, what else in this area here? I think that's it for this yeah, area. That's really nice. Let's move forward. So in here is the... Um, Hanging locker, hanging locker and that floor comes up and the thruster is right there mm -hmm. that black corner piece there with the acrylic cover on it mm -hmm. that's actually the breaker for the windlass and oh. it pulls its power from all the huge wires that go to the bow thruster okay and then it has its own separate breaker that's smaller and the power goes from there up to the windlass so if your windlass isn't working it might be because your shoes kind of push the breaker mm -hmm. there well, that's why the cover plate on there. Right. And then right to the left of that is a little drain plug. And this is a, a drain plug so that, it, you know, you can actually check to see, is there any water in the nose of the boat there? Mm -hmm. I hate to leave anything that doesn't have a plug where you can check to see. And it's nice. You can just pop that out every once in a while. The light automatically comes on here. Big, tall hanging locker. Um, the normal hanging locker is about this height, mm -hmm. um, but some folks like it bigger. Um, on the bed here, if we come around again, super comfortable bed. Uh... But take a look around here. This side here is our the back side of our AC panels. And look at how the wiring is done there. Very um, nice. And then uh, Yamaha hub here in the middle. And then look at how the lights come on and off mm -hmm. automatically um, on each side. So you've got lights to service things as soon as you take these cover plates off. And then I'll Show take that. that. This side here is where all of your your fuse panels are and these are new fuse panels where if the fuse pops there's a little led light that comes on mm. that shows you that's the one that's popped that's and nice. that's real handy again you can see how cleanly done everything is here um, this is the heater inlet here and then he's got 12 volt power there we could run a cpap machine a nice little shelf as an option and then you had us add an extra reading light here um, so and then one thing that's not so obvious is right there, um, that, that is a whole boat, um, basically a GFI, they call it an AFCI, but the power comes in from the shore, goes through that, and then goes out to the rest of the boat. And if the whole boat's AC system has stopped, it's probably because mm -hmm. that has failed or, or tripped or for tripped, some reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Here you've got screens. I typically take them out. Um, notice you've got a bookshelf here with overhead lights in it there. Mm -hmm. And I'm 6'2", and I still have a foot here Plenty of headroom, yeah. And yeah. you can sleep either direction, either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And you, most folks will tend to sleep a thwart ship because mm -hmm. then you can get on and off without having to crawl over each other. Right, yeah. It's really nice that way. So that is a speedy walk through the inside. Let's walk through the outside real quick on deck. Okay. And I think we'll be done. Sounds ah. good. As we go forward, there's a handhold here. You've got two steps up on this side. This was an owner request, and she was like, 
I'd rather have two steps to come up, and I think she was right. Here you've got a nice big handhold here, and then if you come on up, you can see a little bit more. So this is a track here for what we call a Denver sunshade, and it slides in and it lets you have a little sunshade mm. up over the whole back deck. Okay. These are sharp scientific grade solar panels, uh, uh, polycrystalline panels, and they're about 22% efficient at making electricity, each one 140 watts. Um, he's got his radar off right now for transport, um, and you pull this pin right here, and the whole mass folds back, mm. and then the highest point when you're trailering is right here with the uh, kayak racks, and that's 12 feet 6. So really an easy tow that way. Nice. You notice how all the surfaces are round, and the windows are round, and the it really tows easily. Mm -hmm. Way, I mean, I get 11 miles per gallon at 65 when I'm towing. Wow. Um, great big hatches here. And if you look at the glass, again, we've used the solar guard glass mm -hmm. on the side here. It kind of reflects about 50% of the sun's energy. It costs about $1,400 more. And you notice the glass is all bonded in. There's no aluminum frames that are powder coated that will corrode over time. This is the deck trail, big solid rail here. Um, this is our... Smart uh, plug show power cord connection here, right there, mm -hmm. and the power goes from that right into that um, mm -hmm. whole boat GFI there. These are tempered glass windows here, pantograph wipers on a C108, and they have intermittent and um, squirter standard. Great big Lumar hatches so you can stand on if you want. Another great big Lumar windlass, thousand pounder, uh, and these are LED lights again like the other boats. And then in the bow here, it's got a bitter end for the uh, anchor line to tie to. And he ordered it with a saltwater wash down too. Mm -hmm. Ah, we're missing the the twister knob here too. So I, I got a few, this boat's got a few days before it leaves and I haven't had time to walk through every single bit of it. So <laughs> now you're doing it. I've seen it. Yeah. I'll make a list when we get done here. This deck trail is a little bit smaller, still functional though. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, five inches wide there. And I think that's it for a C-108 walkthrough. Beautiful.